Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is The Lollipop and today I'm going to compare two similar bikes in Trek's mountain bike lineup and those are the 2022 Trek Excalibur 9 and the 2022 Trek Pro Caliber 9.5. A good amount of people have asked me for this comparison, and it makes sense since both of these bikes are lightweight, cross-country, hardtail mountain bikes designed to be fast and efficient on lighter trails. So essentially, if you're looking into getting a new mountain bike in this category, this video will help you decide which one of these is better for you, since I will compare every single component that is different between these bikes, and I'll make this table to highlight those differences. At the end of the video, I'll also give my personal opinion on which bike is more worth it for the money. So to get right into it, let's go over these price differences first. The 2022 Excalibur 9 is currently priced at $1,930 US dollars, while the 2022 Pro Calibur 9.5 is around $400 more at $2,300. I'll also cover the colors here, so for 2022, the Excalibur 9 comes in this alpine blue color, as well as a factory orange color in some other countries besides the US. The Pro Calibre 9.5 comes in this radioactive red color with Trek black accents, and once again in some other countries it comes in this lithium gray color with Trek black accents. But for the main comparison on these bikes, I'm going to mention that both bikes share the exact same rims, seat, and handlebar, so I won't cover these parts in detail since if you get one of these bikes you will get these parts, but what we can talk about are the differences starting with the frames. The Excalibur 9 uses an aluminum frame with Trex Alpha Gold Aluminum, which is lightweight and strong, but it is not the highest end aluminum they offer. This frame has Boost 141 spacing with a quick release axle in the rear, and I say this a lot, but Boost 141 spacing is definitely getting outdated, and there should be a through axle here for some better frame strength. The frame also does have mounts for a rear rack and for a kickstand if you do want to use it to commute. The Pro Calibur, on the other hand, uses a full OCLV mountain carbon fiber frame, which is lighter in weight and much stronger. This frame has Trex Isospeed Decoupler, which detaches the seat tube from the frame of the bike, so you do have some extra compliance on this otherwise rigid hardtail bike. It also comes with Trex Knock Block System to prevent the fork from hitting the down tube of the frame. And luckily the Pro Calibre does come with a through axle in the rear with Boost 148 spacing, which is the current standard for mountain bikes. Besides that, both bikes come with a tapered head tube for stronger and higher end suspension forks, as well as internal cable routing to look nice and protect those cables. And to illustrate that weight difference, I'll put up the frame weight values in a size medium frame for both bikes. So the Pro Calibre frame is about 1.8 pounds lighter. For some frame geometry numbers, I'll put the head tube angle, seat tube angle, and reach in a size medium on the screen right now, but essentially the Pro Calibre has a slacker head tube angle, which translates to more confidence and stability while going downhill, and it has a steeper seat tube angle to make up for that so you can still climb efficiently uphill. I'll also show the full frame geometry numbers for both bikes starting with the Xcal 9, and then the Pro Calibre in case you want to pause and take a look at those in detail. And now it's time to cover all of the component differences between these bikes. Before I get into it, I do want to mention that generally all of the components on the Pro Calibur are lower end than the ones on the X Calibur. So all you really need to know about these bikes is that the X Calibur has a lower end aluminum frame with higher end components, while the Pro Calibur is the opposite with a higher end carbon frame with lower end components. But if you do want some specifics, I'll start off with the suspension fork differences now. So the Excalibur 9 comes with a RockShox Recon Gold RL, and this fork has the debonair spring, motion control damper, and 32mm wide stanchions, so a really good cross-country fork. The Pro Calibre 9.5 then has a RockShox Judy SL fork, which has a lower end solo air spring, so it'll be less comfortable and provide less damping and efficiency, and it has smaller 30mm wide stanchions, so it is also less strong. Both forks come with a manual lockout to make the fork rigid, and they each have 100mm of suspension travel. But next we can discuss the wheels. Once again, the rims are the same, but the bikes do use different hubs, and I'll put more information in the table at the end of the video, but the hubs are pretty similar. The Pro Calibre just has a through axle and boost 148 spacing to make it stronger. And then we do have a tire difference with the Excalibur using Maxxis Ardent Race tires that are 60 TPI and 29 by 2.35 inches wide. 
The Pro Caliber uses Bond Trigger XR2 Team Issue tires, which are 120 TPI for better flexibility and quality, and they are narrower at 29 by 2.2 inches wide, which makes them lighter in weight. And I'll mention here that both bikes come with tubeless sealant installed instead of inner tubes, so there's actually no risk of pinch flats and much less risk of flats overall. For the brake differences, the Excalibur uses Shimano Dior 2-piston MT410 brakes, which have better modulation and good stopping power. This bike uses a 180mm wide front brake rotor for better stopping power again, and a 160mm rotor in the rear. The Procal then uses the lower end Shimano MT200 2-piston hydraulic brakes, with a 160mm diameter brake rotor in the front and in the rear, However, the front rotor on larger frame size bikes will be 180 millimeters wide. Next, for the seat post, the Excalibur 9 actually has a dropper post, which will either be a Trans X JD brand or a Bond Trigger line dropper, depending on the part availability. But either way, it has 100 millimeters of dropper travel for frame sizes small and medium, and 130 millimeters of travel for larger sizes. This dropper post will help you maintain better balance on your bike over rough terrain, and overall it just helps a lot on rougher trails. And the Pro Calibre uses a normal fixed seat post to save weight, and this is a generic Bond Trigger alloy post. And next, the stems on these bikes are different models, but they are pretty similar so I'll put those details in the end table as well. But finally, we can talk about the drivetrains on these bikes. The Excalibur 9 has a higher end drivetrain that is mainly a Shimano SLX M7100 1x12, while the Pro Calibur downgrades to a mainly Shimano Dior M6100 1x12, which is still definitely a good drivetrain on its own. However, for the specific drivetrain parts, I'll put all of those on the screen right now. So the Excalibur 9 has a higher end shifter that is more reliable and durable, but honestly it's not too different. Both of these shifters have the ability to shift up to 3 gears at once when going to an easier gear for pedaling. However, the rear derailers are different, and the Excalibur 9 has a very high-end Shimano XT derailleur that is extremely durable, reliable, and precise. The Pro Calibur uses a Shimano Dior version that's still pretty good, but it will just be less durable with lower quality components. The cranksets are very similar as well with a 30 tooth chainring on both, but the Excalibur crankset will be lighter in weight. The cassettes on these bikes also do have the same amount of teeth, with 10 teeth on the smallest gear or cog, and 51 teeth on the largest cog. That means that these bikes will have the exact same gear ratios, but the Excalibur's drivetrain is lighter in weight, more durable, and smoother overall. And one last important point here is that the Excalibur uses a threaded bottom bracket, which is much easier to maintain and service, while the Procalibur still uses a press fit bottom bracket. And before I give my final thoughts, I will quickly show you the official weight of both of these bikes on the screen right now. They were weighed in a size medium, and as you can see, the Procalibur does weigh 1.94 pounds less on average. But those are all the differences between these bikes, now it's time to show you those completed tables and give my overall thoughts. If you're more worried about weight and want the lightest bike for the money, the Pro Calibur is of course the better option here. Even with all of the higher end and lighter components on the Excalibur, the Pro Calibur's lighter frame still allows it to beat out the Excalibur in terms of weight. The carbon Pro Calibur frame is also of course a higher end frame with modern geometry and spacing, and it will be stronger overall. I'd say get the Pro Calibur if you are not as worried about the money and want a really good frame that you can upgrade parts on in the future. On the other hand, get the Excalibur if you just want a bike that basically needs no upgrades at all and is ready to ride for a long time. However, the downside here is that you can't upgrade that Excal frame to be stronger or lighter. At the end of the day though, both bikes are great and you will have a great time riding on either of them, but I would personally go with the Pro Calibur to get the better frame and just upgrade parts as I need to or as they wear out, especially since the parts on the Pro Calibur are definitely not bad as is. I would personally only choose the Excalibur if I valued some of the commuter features like being able to install a kickstand or a rear rack, or if I do not care about how light the bike is. I could probably talk about this forever, but I'll end the video here, hopefully this helps you out a little bit, and if it did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, but otherwise I hope all of you have a wonderful morning today, and remember to keep biking.